Well, good afternoon, people. It's been a while since I have done one of these. Um, no particular reason. It's just that, um, you know, my life is so wonderfully full. And with all this travelling I do and premieres that I have to attend to and autographs I have to sign, it's <laughs> um, not so easy to remember, um, which is actually more like it. It's just a matter of me remembering. Um, but still. Do you know, I was on somewhere or other, on the internet, surprise, surprise, and some, there was a question asked, the discussion was about, um, oh, it was uh, to do with a new psychology book that suggests that as we evolve, we are becoming less and less violent. Um, now, I don't know about the truth of that or not. However, um, I have thought that certainly as regards we in the West, um, life is very much less violent today than it used to be. Um, because I've thought for quite some time that, you know, people who go on about how the good old days were the good old days compared to now are just complete wankers um, who either have got really low IQs and they never remembered anything to do with history um, or they slept throughout their childhoods um, you know we don't burn people at the stake now and we're well, not generally speaking and um, you know we generally do not torture people um, we don't think it's all right to put people in the stocks we don't think it's all right to beat children half to death we don't think it's all right to send children down the mines, and we don't think it's all right to beat women up um, for not performing tasks and doing exactly as their male counterpart tells them to do. No. Um, yes, we still have problems in other countries, um, not to mention Middle Eastern countries where they still stone people to death and where they still kill homosexuals um, by chopping our heads off or given us the choice to jump off a cliff and various other horrible things and yes torture still goes on and unfortunately um, both American and British governments have colluded in that um, in fact dare I say actually been involved in it not just colluded but whatever but generally speaking we live in a less violent world um, at least mine is and I know that yours is too, if you're watching this. However, as is usual, some bloody stupid religionist had to turn it around to God. Well, the Bible doesn't say it's less violent. Pardon? God's word does not say it's less violent. And I only take notice of God's words. Well, I can't say that I'm very much aware of when God last published a book on the subject, do you? I haven't read one recently. When was the last time you went in the supermarket and saw in the top ten the new novel by God? Or the new non-fiction by God? Well, actually, I suppose it would be a novel. Anyway, the general gist of this being that, of course, this person said quite unabashedly that they know what God's will is for them. Can you understand that? They know what God's will is for them. How can they possibly know that? Because the Bible says that it's God's word. Oh, I see. Well, Voldemort says he's the ruler of the world in Harry Potter, so do we take that to be true too? What these idiots don't seem to realise, actually, you know, I, I shouldn't really say they're idiots, because what they are is incredibly sick and arrogant people. These people who claim they know what God's will is and who claim that the Bible is the word of God. Um, what they don't seem to realise is that the only person who's actually decided that is themselves. This doesn't come from outside of themselves. There is no objective proof whatsoever that the Bible is the word of anybody but some lunatic men who wrote it all down in order to control people. 
Um, I mean, it's got to be because it makes no bloody sense. It's as simple as that. Yes, there might be some, well, be a few good nuggets in there, but generally it's pretty vile. Um, the things that it suggests to do to women and children and to people who are not white, um, and to basically um, Gentiles too. Um, it's not a very nice book. Um, and it, it's full of incest and violence and doing all sorts of things to kowtow to God. Um, have you ever thought that, you know, if God is really that almighty, why the fuck does he want us to praise him? Well, of course he doesn't. You know, this is all, I mean, you just got to read the Bible and you can see the human ego in it. We've made God in our image, not the other way around. We are the ones who would require worship if we were able to <coughs> fart and make the sun go out. I mean... Of course we would. And we'd expect you all to obey us, too. Or else I can blow you out with one little puff. <laughs> oh dear. Well, oh, that's another subject they hate. But, and I, I am obviously quite one of that very fortunate group. I'm having my Illy Collie, <laughs> Illy Coffee, while I'm deciding to talk to you. What are you doing, Ada? I've got Ada over there sitting at me. In fact, the dogs are all looking at me as if I'm slightly potty, thinking, well, who's he talking to? Well, believe it or not, at the other side of this lens, there are millions of people, and I'm addressing them. And at the end, I shall bless them. There's millions, probably minus 999,999, watching me speak. What? Put your teeth in. You're not allowed to have your teeth out. No, you're not. Oops. I shouldn't have spoken to you, should I? Now, look, I'm having a serious conversation here. They, she doesn't worry about anything. She knows who God is as far as she's concerned, don't you? Yes. It's a little metal dish that gets filled once a day. That's God. And I'm merely God's minion who puts it in there for her. This thing lives for food. She adores food, don't you? Now, bugger off. So, you know, when people... Ah! No! Behave, please. So when people start going on at you about God's will, just close your ears, because they haven't got a clue. They don't know what God's will is, and as soon as they say that they do, that tells you everything you need to know about them, that they're completely up themselves, they don't have a clue, and they're very frightened people um, who need to be certain. Well, there's nothing certain about life. Nothing certain at all. I'm reading a book at the moment. I've been reading it for quite some time. Um, and it, it's a really fascinating book. It's written by Bill Bryson. And it's all about everything we know right now. About evolution, how the world got here and all that sort of thing, and I wish I knew what the damn thing was called. It would be so much better, wouldn't it? Because you could rush out and buy it, and I can make Bill Bryson even richer, and then he can send me a check for a percentage of it. Um, do you know, this is dreadful. I don't know what it's called. So let me see if I can get to my Kindle. No. Go away. It's not that time yet. You've got over an hour. Winter seems to have had an effect on these. Ah. A short history of nearly everything. That's what it's called. That's why I forgot, because it is too full. Go! It's too long, I mean. Well, I have to say, first of all, he's a very good writer. And he does explain things extremely well. But I have got far more questions now than when I first started to read the thing. And I'm 70% of the way through it, something like that, according to 
um, this. So, like the fossil record is, there's huge chunks not there, and there is some explanation for that. Um, it's because some things just couldn't be fossilised because they didn't have enough bone in them. Um, but things are by no means certain um, that not only have they not found the missing link between apes and us, um, but not even sure if there is one now. Um, and they don't know whether we sort of suddenly appeared or slowly evolved or... It's all very complicated. And, of course, human egos have been involved in all of this too. But, now, before you start getting all excited and wetting your knickers, um, none of what I've read so far says, so in which case God must have made it all, because that is equally just completely daft. Um, there are two things that I find incredibly unbelievable. Um, one, that there is a supreme being that waved his magic wand and the universe and everything suddenly appeared. Um, that clearly didn't happen. Um, however, um, I'm not so sure that the Big Bang did either. Um, it makes absolutely no sense to me. And I don't care how many millionths of a second they can go back to, they cannot go back to the Big Bang itself and what caused it. Now, nothing, if there is nothing, then I'm sorry, but fuck all can happen. Nothing can bang. No densely packed little nothing can suddenly expand into all this. No, it can't. And I also don't see how a dog or a cat or a cow or any other complicated being could have evolved because do we know any creatures that have got a partial nervous system or a partial heart or a partial kidney or a partial liver were they human beings that only had bits of it well no I don't think so you see that doesn't make a lot of sense to me either however I am much more inclined to the scientific than I am to the religious um, except for one thing that I don't believe that our consciousness survives death I know that it does um, it's a subject I've studied for over 30 years. Um, one, I didn't want to be true, but I grudgingly accept that it is. And um, I'd really rather it wasn't, but there we are, it is true, and that's all there is to it. And the people who say that there is no evidence for it are just liars, quite simply. Or they're arrogant twats who are doing just what the religionists do. Um, it couldn't possibly fit into their idea of the world, so they don't even bother to examine it. Um, they leave that to other people, as somebody told me. Um, I was really quite distressed when this person said what they said, that, well, other people have concluded it's all bunkum, I don't see why I need to as well. Oh dear. And um, I was very shocked that they said that to me, because I thought more of them intellectually speaking. I don't think any less of them as a person, but intellectually speaking I had hitherto thought more of them um, and now I don't because that is a very religious thing to say. Will you go away? Stop it! She also doesn't like to be told this dog. She doesn't take much notice. I'm not talking to you! Dear me. Anyway, they're like toddlers. See, that's totally thrown me off my track. Right, so, now that of course means that they would have to rethink a lot of what they actually think, and they're far too invested in what they think and believe to do that, so it's far better to dismiss people like me as just total cranks um, who don't know what we're talking about. Um, well, we do. Um, we're not the only ones. There have been plenty of um, scientifically minded people, and are plenty of scientifically minded people, who also believe that consciousness survives physical death. And some of them are professors, and some of them are physicists. You know, so we're not all uneducated planks. Which, of course, you could say that I am. I'm totally uneducated. 
having not been educated after the age of 15, that's when I left school, and um, the attempts I made to continue education after that can hardly be called education because I did bugger all, um, because I was far too yeah. round the twist at that particular time to be able to do anything. And it's all very well being adored, but you know, to have people to sit, I mean dogs, to sit there and stare at me. And you're lovely, you really are lovely, but you're not Daniel Craig, so there's no point. You needn't sit there and stare at me adoringly. I love you anyway, and I'm going to give you food. But not yet. 90 minutes, wait at least. Bugger off. So, there we are. See, these people who insist that they know what the truth is, don't. I mean, I have no idea what it is. As I said, I firmly believe that life survives death, um, consciousness survives death, the same as I believe that as a human being I need to pee. And, you know, there's no getting away from that. You need to pee too. That's what it is to be human. And, um, you know, I know that the sun rises tomorrow. And I can't say that I know that the sun is always going to rise tomorrow because we all know that one day that isn't going to happen. Um, you know, that's another thing that's completely ridiculous is the, the idea that, you know, heaven is going to be on this earth where we'll live happily ever after, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, which I suppose is what happily ever after means. So what I just said is completely redundant. But, well, that's not going to happen. And... Oh, and in this book, yet again, I'm reading about how vastly our climates have changed, and not in the too distant past either. You know, Europe was an ice sheet. Oh, and it's been tropical. And sub-Saharan. Not that I'm too sure what that means. Sub-Saharan. Does that mean just under fucking hot? Just a little bit? Or over hot? Who knows? You see, so all these people that get their knickers in a twist about climate change, well, it's going to change anyway. So what are you going on about? There is nothing we can do about it. See, even people who don't believe in God still are just as arrogant as those who insist that they do when they know exactly what God's will is. You don't know what God's will is for me, and these scientists ought to really know that there's nothing they can do to stop the climate changing. It's changing. It always has, and it always will. That doesn't mean that we don't need to reduce our carbon emissions. Of course we do, and we need to reduce pollution, etc., because we need to live presently as best as we can. And, you know, not do as much damage to the planet as we've been doing, but it's going to go in its own merry way, and probably in another 10,000 years' time, where we are just isn't going to be here, it's going to be under the water, or it's going to be frozen, or, you know, I'll have my sand, my bucket and spade out, and I'll be playing in the sand. And then going back into my three-storey tent. <sighs> People are so daft. And, you know, we have been here for the shortest time. The really, the teeniest, teeniest little bit of time. Us people. And... Yet we already think that the world needs to change and it owes us a living. And that the world should just stop evolving now because it's going to be terribly inconvenient for us and we can't have that, can we? Oh no. So anyway, there are the thoughts of this particular uneducated plank. And like it or not, I don't really care. And um, I hope you have a good day if you've managed to get this far and you haven't expired and this is the 1st of December 19... shit 212 2012 I mean 19... I can't believe I said 19 something 2012 coming up to Christmas which I hate and coming up to my birthday which I also hate I do not like this time of year not my favourite and I wish it would snow because despite the fact that it's horrible for me in that I'll be housebound if it does um, it still makes everything lovely and white and shiny and I like that so bye bye